It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Monday, May the 6th. I'm Michael Groff. We begin this week with below average temperatures across the area, but afternoon highs will gradually creep up by the middle part of the week. And by this weekend, we'll return to above normal temperatures. And as a matter of fact, we could see afternoon highs approaching the triple digits once more. And all the while, sadly to say, we will stay dry as you would come to expect this time of year. So let's get into it looking at the almanac from yesterday. 85 degrees was the afternoon high, 69 the morning low. It was a rather pleasant day with lots of clouds around and breezy to even windy conditions at times through the day. 91 and 66 are the averages for this time of year. 108 degrees, the record high, no thanks. And that was back in 2017. As we look outside right now at 1045 a.m., sunny sky, we've got 73 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew point 21, humidity 13%. Yeah, it's dry out there. The winds are light for the moment and the barometer 29.91 inches and falling. The upper level weather pattern across the nation, rather interesting. We've got a vigorous shortwave trough coming out across the Plain States, and that's going to be the focus for some severe weather this afternoon from really from Texas all the way up into parts of the Dakotas and Iowa, but really the the main bullseye is going to be centered from Oklahoma on up into parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, and Iowa. And we'll take a look at that in more detail in just a moment. Now, we're on the backside of all this. We're in a dry northwesterly flow. I mean, low humidity, uh, temperatures will be a little bit below average today, maybe a light afternoon breeze. That's going to be about all we have to contend with. But ridging will eventually build in, but kind of an interesting weather pattern is going to take shape before that happens. And we'll talk about that in modeling as well. Convective outlook for today, we, or rather the watch warning map for today, we've got the uh, tornado watch in effect for parts of Kansas and Nebraska, places that have seen way too much severe weather over the last uh, couple of weeks, and there is the potential for more. Now, we also have red flag warnings over sections of New Mexico, West Texas, Oklahoma, and some of the adjacent areas, the Southern Rockies there. Uh, when you combine dry conditions with wind, yeah, that sets the stage for the potential of wildfires. Now, further to the north over parts of Montana and out into the Dakotas, you've got high wind warnings and wind advisories and even a few winter storm warnings in the higher elevations of Montana and Wyoming, too. There, some snowflakes have been flying up there. Now, the convective outlook, and we've got the rare high risk of severe storms. We see this maybe once or twice a year. That's level five out of five. And obviously, all modes of severe weather possible there. The moderate risk of severe storms surrounds it. In that high risk, places like Oklahoma City, Norman, Moore, Oklahoma, Ponca City, Enid. The moderate risk, you've got Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Hutchinson, Wichita, Kansas in there. And again, the broader severe weather risk really from West Texas all the way up into parts of the Dakotas and Iowa, Illinois into parts of the southeast U.S., but obviously the, the primary threat is in that moderate and high risk, even the enhanced risk areas. That's where the potential of strong to severe storms uh, with large hail, damaging straight line winds, and violent long track tornadoes. Unfortunately, that is a distinct possibility. And in fact, to highlight that, this is the tornado outlook for today across parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. And this is the potential probability of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given point. And look at that. Oklahoma City, Enid, Ponca City, Moore, Oklahoma, Norman, you are in that 30 to 44 percent chance. And again, that's the probability of a tornado within 25 miles of a given point in that zone. And when you see 44 percent chance, that's very significant. OK, that's not to be downplayed. And the crossed hatch areas, those anywhere you see that, that's also the potential of a significant tornado. That means EF2 or stronger. And that's really all across much of Oklahoma, Kansas, and even points north. So uh, it's going to be a very uh, busy day today and busy evening this evening. And the storm chasers love it, but uh, places, the property owners, people that live there, uh, this is a this could be a serious situation, so you're obviously going to want to keep an eye on your local weather. Uh, NOAA Weather Radio, your phones, all the uh, alerts put out by the National Weather Service. Obviously, keep an eye on the skies there. Now, closer to home for us, precipitation outlook valid through Monday morning of next week. Nothing to keep an eye on here. I mean, nothing. Nothing in the valley. Nothing statewide. No precipitation expected. 
And that's just very typically the case. We'll get into what's going on with this weather pattern in more detail, and there's more to it than meets the eye. Let's talk about it here. This is the GFS. As we take a look at the models, it's the 12Z run. This is valid at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Negative tilt shortwave trough coming out across the Plain State's ideal setup for severe weather. You don't want to see that. But for us, yeah, dry northwesterly flow. And so what it's going to mean for us down at the surface for the rest of the day today, sunny and rather pleasant for early May. High temperatures mid to perhaps upper 80s with a light afternoon breeze. That's all we get. And low humidity, dry conditions. Now for tonight, we've got clear sky aplenty and overnight lows. It'll be mostly in the 50s, maybe around 60 in the urban core. And that's not bad either. I mean, we'll take that. Uh, if you were out early this morning, I was out walking the dog. Absolutely gorgeous out there this morning. And that'll be the case for tomorrow morning too. Now for the day tomorrow, a little bit warmer, highs upper 80s to low 90s. But that's pretty much in line with where we ought to be for this time of year as that trough continues to sit out there. Now, what's going to happen over the next few days? Kind of an interesting setup. The GFS really wants to break off a piece of energy from this negative tilt trough and kind of back it up, kind of retrograde it across the Rockies. And it's going to sit to the north and northeast of us and eventually kind of pivot back toward Utah and northern Arizona. Now, this is Wednesday. High temperatures, again, upper 80s, low 90s, mostly sunny. But breezy conditions around here is that so that upper low kind of starts to pivot back to the west and southwest a bit. And, you know, this is going to create a, a stronger gradient with some pressure gradient here at the surface. So we're going to see the uh, winds start to pick up once again. Now, this is Thursday. We've got some showers and thunderstorms north of Arizona, maybe even infringing on the Arizona-Utah border right there around the four corners. There could be some isolated showers and thunderstorms there. But obviously, that would be... Well to the north of us, we're not going to see much more than maybe a couple of passing high clouds. That's going to be about it for us. And again, some light breezes, especially in the afternoons. And that's about all we'll have. Highs again, upper 80s, low 90s for Thursday. Friday, still we've got low pressure just to the north of us and an isolated shower storm right up along the, the Arizona-Utah border, the four corners, parts of New Mexico, obviously Colorado. But for us, just no chance of rain. We're just too far south. Air mass is just going to remain bone dry around here. Uh, so high temperatures, again, will probably hold around 90, the low 90s or so. But as we get to the weekend, ridging is going to build in. It's going to kick that low out of here. It's going to move off to the east. Uh, so showers and thunderstorms for parts of Colorado, New Mexico, West Texas, maybe even uh, into Oklahoma. Uh, but for us, we're dry. And we're warmer. Highs well up in the mid-90s, mid to upper 90s on Sunday with dry conditions to continue for the most part. Now, here we go to a week from today. This is Monday, the 13th. And again, ridging roughly more or less is around off to the north and west of us. But temperatures should hold somewhere in the mid 90s to near 100 is when i'm looking at uh, the national blend of models the guidance and we'll show you this in a minute highs could very well get close to the century mark here uh but there's a little bit of uncertainty as to how this plays out the gfs has kind of been wobbling around in the uh the upper air patterns here and how they play out over the next seven to ten days there's there's just been a wide variation of solutions here Going out 10 days, this is Wednesday the 15th, and again, it shows ridging here. If this does happen to verify, we'd be pretty warm. High temperatures would be around the century mark, maybe even a couple of degrees above. I'd say any highs 97 to 102 for us in Phoenix, again, if this verifies. And sooner or later, that is how this is ultimately going to play out. Will it be next week? Yeah, it very well could be. All right, look at a rainfall for Phoenix. This is off the GFS Ensemble. This goes out through the 20th of May, and you know the deal. Just no chance of, of rain. European Ensemble, same story, just no rain. Here's the air quality forecast for the week, and really no air quality issues. We're generally in the low to moderate range on ozone and the particulate matter, both the PM10, PM2.5. That kind of moderate um, through the middle part of the week, but by late week, I think uh, we'll see kind of a trend down and better air quality, uh, hopefully. 
what we really love to see is some rain just really help clean out the air, but I mean, that's wishful thinking. All right, temperatures off the national blend of models. Obviously, uh, not terrible today and tomorrow and Wednesday, and then we're going to warm it up. And you can see by early next week, there, there's the triple digits in there. And that seems pretty reasonable given the weather pattern that's coming on in. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video is back here tomorrow morning. Should you happen to enjoy these videos, then be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. If you really like what we do here, click that thanks icon below the video. You can make don donations to our channel directly through that or directly to me via PayPal. Groffshow at gmail.com is the PayPal address. It's G-R-O-F-F -F show at gmail.com for PayPal. The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my one and only O-A-O, -O, the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation and proprietor of sweetchildaz.com.org and the Facebook page of the same name, Sweet Child Arizona, talking about my Michelle. So do check her out and her videos and her sweet child and as kind of an aside, our streaming station as well. It's called KMGX, whereupon we play a ton of music and have a lot of fun there. That, all of that, everything I just mentioned is linked up down in the description. So please, please do check all of that out. Uh, otherwise, I thank you guys so much for watching and all of your continued support. It is immensely appreciated. And you guys, please also be safe. And even though it's not quite as warm, I'm still going to tell you, stay cool, stay hydrated out there and have yourselves a beautiful rest of your Monday.